Cedric, sorry, but I can't marry you. Huh? What's wrong? Just consider this. You're about to marry the daughter of a multinational company's president. Can you grasp how it will appear to others? Imagine the groom-to-be of Luminary Holdings' president's daughter is someone who grew up in an orphanage. It's truly astonishing that someone with that background has the audacity to propose to someone like me. You know, is it truly terrible to come from an orphanage? Frankly, Cynthia, if I had my biological parents, naturally, I would have a regular home like everyone else. However, isn't your character as a person far more significant than where you were brought up? Really? So it's because of delusional thinking like that? Which made you think that someone like you could be with someone like me? I mean, I see how you can think that we were raised in different worlds, sure. But I really don't think it's something that is a really big deal. At the very least, not something that someone should be worried about. Not something to worry about? This entire situation feels bizarre and odd to anyone who approaches it logically. You tricked me! You were attractive, intelligent, and held a high-ranking position in a reputable company. But who would ever guess that you were raised in an orphanage? It's quite embarrassing that I actually accepted a proposal from someone like you. <laughs> By that, are you possibly saying that just being with me is embarrassing? That's exactly what I'm saying. Cynthia, you're saying some pretty cruel things, you know. Are you saying that it's so bad that you don't even want to get married anymore? If you weren't raised in an orphanage, I definitely want to get married to you. So handsome and stylish that you put any other guy around to shame. Just walking around with you and feeling the jealous stares of every other woman was one of the best feelings in the world. Not only were you handsome, but you were even climbing the corporate ladder of one of the largest companies around. By the sounds of things, weren't you just waving me around like I was just some trophy of yours? What are you saying, Cedric? It was nothing like that. I loved you. I loved everything about you. Except, of course, the fact that you were raised in an orphanage. If only you weren't raised in an institution, you would've been perfect. Hey, wait a minute. You're saying that the only reason that you've been with me is because of what I look like and what job I have? You haven't even been bothered to look nor care about who I am as a person? Of course not. I also loved how nice you always were to me. But be honest with me, Cedric. Is what I'm saying really so wrong? Isn't how someone looks and what type of job they have important factors when choosing someone you're going to spend your future with? I mean, I loved you for how you had such an innocent outlook on everything, but also had a sense of freedom that no one could take away. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. But being innocent can also mean that I'm sometimes brutally honest, right? So it seems that no one has been completely straightforward with you and said this to your face. So I'll be exactly the person that you fell in love with and be brutally honest with you. Being with someone who was raised in an orphanage is something that I just simply cannot accept. So it seems that no matter what, the only thing that you seem to really care about is not who I am as a person, but where I was raised. Being raised in that orphanage and the experiences that I received in doing so is only one part of me. But it's a part of me that I believe to be extremely important in how my life was shaped and how I became the person that I am today. It's really a shame that you of all people are unable to understand that. Who on earth could possibly understand that? I mean, really, being raised in an orphanage? Think about it. What do you imagine when you think of orphanages? The only things you see at orphanages is dirty halls filled with kids who are thrown away by their own parents. Poor kids with bad behavior who go nowhere in life. Who in their right mind would possibly think that a normal person could be raised in such an environment? None of what you said is even remotely true. Really, Cynthia, you should really start learning about the real world a little more. Having such a distorted view and putting everyone in some category that you decided for yourself. Honestly speaking, you are showing a really ugly part of yourself. Huh, say whatever you want about me. I'm the daughter of the company president, while you're just some dirty kid that was raised in an orphanage. It's clear as day to anyone who's worth anything, which of us is more of a benefit to society? I wouldn't be so sure about that. There are tons of people who don't look at the world through such a biased lens. People who truly care for who you are, not where you were raised. But now I know how you truly feel. More than that, I now know that you and I will never truly get along. You say that we'll never get along, but let's be honest here. I was always completely and utterly out of your league. 
You know what, Cynthia? You might be right. Maybe we were never in the same league as each other. However, you're wrong if you think it's because you're the daughter of some company president. Because you're such a person that discriminates against people based on such superficial reasons. You and I will never be in the same league as each other. Wow, really? Don't be acting like some impertinent little child. Show some proper respect to your better half and stop getting carried away just because you were raised in an institution. This whole time, you've been making the case that people should feel bad for you just because you don't have any parents. Even though you've been raised as some beggar, getting by on everyone else's goodwill. Cynthia, where did you learn such a twisted point of view? Seriously, even if I did live a life where I had begged to make a living, what's wrong with someone who's doing whatever they can in order to survive until the next day? Hearing you say all of this, it only makes me realize that you have such a narrow and flawed way of thinking. No, now, Cedric, that's only your pride talking. Many people see things the same exact way I do. Someone who was just raised in an institution for abandoned children like yourself is just that despicable. You're embarrassed? I'm the one who chose to try and get married to someone whose biases and mindset are so distorted. I'm embarrassed for not being able to see who you truly are. If you're someone who thinks those things about other human beings, why is it that you didn't say so sooner? Obviously, it's because I never knew that you were an orphan until after I accepted your proposal. When I found out what you actually were, I decided to try and see if the other near-perfect parts of you could balance everything out. I was debating with myself the whole time whether I should keep you or throw you away like your parents did. You know, boys are basically just like accessories anyway. If you can't show them off in public, they're worthless. However, I've come to the conclusion that I just can't stand the embarrassment of being with a man who was raised as an orphan. Well, that's great to hear. You're free to think of me in any way that you want, and frankly, I don't care. But it really pisses me off that you seem to look down on all orphans as well as the great people, like my stepbrother, who treat them as family. Haha, <laughs> seem to look down on them? What are you talking about? Of course I look down on them. They're nothing compared to me. Have we not been having the same conversation? I'll say it one more time, hopefully clear enough for you to understand. Just being with a lowly, disgusting orphan is enough to make me die of embarrassment. Do you understand what I'm saying, Cedric? Being with an orphan like you is just too much. Cynthia, that way of thinking is something I will never in a million years even begin to comprehend. You are the lowest type of scum society has to offer. Say whatever you want to. Scream to the high heavens for all I care. Just don't get the wrong idea. Some stray dog crying classism isn't enough to make me think twice. Well, anyway, I'll go ahead and cancel the wedding ceremony, okay? Yeah, if you could do that for me, I would truly appreciate it. I'm so glad that I was able to see your true colors before we actually got married. Huh, Cedric, you're stealing my line. I'm glad that my family name wasn't tarnished by having some vile orphan sneakily marry his way into it. Oh, but... Would you even be able to pay for half of the cancellation fee of the ceremony? I would feel bad getting some poor lowly orphan to pay for such an expensive fee. I've earned each and every penny that I have, more than I can say about you. But if paying the cancellation fee means that I don't have to get married to someone like you, the cancellation fee is something that I'd be happy to pay 10 times over. But don't you dare make light of the work that I've put into making my life what it is now. You mean the money that you've been begging your whole life for in order to get? Maybe I too should start relying on the sympathy of others in order to get ahead in life, huh? Oh my, so very despicable. How dare you? I have not begged for a single thing in my life. My father is going to be gravely disappointed to hear this, but I'm going to tell him about how the wedding is canceled. Be sure to do that for me. Nevertheless, it's amazing that there is someone who'd even want an adoptive child who was raised in an orphanage. Could it be that he's your sugar daddy? <laughs> That's enough out of you. My father is nothing like that. He is, and always will be, a good man. You've been making fun of the people to which I'm closest to, having no regard for them as human beings. Not even just that, you've even reduced yourself to blatantly insulting them. If you continue to insult my family any further, I will never forgive you. Oh no, woe is me. My now ex-fiance won't forgive me for poking a little fun at his family. Whatever am I going to do? Could it be that, oh no, he might return to his roots and start begging. 
Oh, I can only imagine the things that he would resort to begging for. Could it be something like, Oh, please, dear sweet Cynthia, please bless me with some food so that I don't have to starve. Oh no, I'm so scared. Well, when you do start to beg, I'm not going to be giving you anything anyway. So that's how you want to play it then, Cynthia? Fine. I get it. I now know exactly the type of cruel person that you are. All the nasty things that you've been saying about my beloved family, my roots at the orphanage, and even the great man who decided to become my father, I'll make sure that you regret all of it. I'll make you pay, Cynthia, for everything that you've said today. Cedric, are you there? There's something that I have to talk with you about immediately. There is something that I have to confirm with you. Something major has happened. Please, Cedric, talk to me. What do you want? I'm in the middle of work. What is there that you could possibly want? Uh, Cedric, there's something I need to confirm with you right away. I already asked. What do you want? I'm busy, so hurry up and spill it. Cedric, you're working for the Hyperion Group's main office, right? Are you meaning to tell me that even though you're that young, you are the head of your department? Department head? Do you even know anything about me? I've already been promoted out of being the department head. I'm the executive director. It's not like it has any relation to you though, so why am I even telling you this? But get to the point, what do you want? Wait, what? You're the executive director? Are you being serious right now, Cedric? Uh, Cedric, you do know that my parents' company is called Luminary Holdings, right? Yeah, of course I know about that. How could I not with how much you're always bragging about being the daughter of the president of Luminary Holdings? So, I think you know about my family's Luminary company, but recently there's been something bad that's happened between Luminary and Hyperion. It seems that Hyperion has cut the contract that it had with my parents' company. It's become this huge mess at the company. Huh? So? It's not like I'm involved with you or your family anymore. Why should I care if your parents' company loses or keeps a contract? What do you mean you're not involved with my family anymore? I mean, you definitely have something to do with this, don't you? You're the executive director of the company, right? You have to know what's going on. You're angry about the cancellation of the wedding, so you had the company cut the contract, didn't you? You're making quite a big mistake now, aren't you, Cynthia? It's actually kind of laughable. I mean, sure, I was the one who ultimately gave the order to cut the contract with Luminary Holdings. But as for the reason, it definitely wasn't because you had decided to ultimately cancel the wedding. Why would you even think I'd be so petty as to make such a decision over something like that? What? Then why would you do something like this, Cedric? The Luminary Company is in real hot water now that the contract was nullified. What do you think we're to do? For some reason, news got out that the contract with Hyperion was cut? Now other big contracts are trying to pull out of the company. If so many big companies pull out at once, there will be little chance for Luminary to recover. If it continues like this, Luminary is sure to fall into bankruptcy. Ah, is that so? Well then, it's probably best for you as the prized daughter of the Luminary company to go to the company and start trying to help out. And I'll let you know the reason to which I gave the order to actually end the contract with Luminary. It's simply because you've been making a fool out of the people that I hold most dear in my life. What? You're doing all of this, tearing down my family's company, ruining our lives, just because I did something as small as that? Something as small as that? You make me sick. To you, it might not be such a big deal to say those horrible things about the people that I care about. But to me, it's something that was completely unforgivable. Also, more than anything else, this might be a good experience for you. Losing all the things you've been flaunting in people's faces, maybe you'll truly start to understand the gravity of the cruel things you've been saying. Isn't that just great karmic justice? Cedric, this isn't some joke. Please, I'm begging you. Bring the deal back with Iberian. If you restart the contract, I'll even allow you to go through with the wedding like we originally planned. Cynthia, stop making me laugh. What are you talking about here? I'd be begging not to marry someone who is as vile and heartless as you. Your whole existence was a stain on my life. I'm glad to be rid of it. But even if I did want to reverse it, this isn't something that I did all on my own. Not all on your own? What do you mean by that? Really, Cynthia? You're the esteemed daughter of the Luminary Holdings. 
yet you don't have any idea of how businesses really work? Well, I guess that makes sense, especially since you've never actually had to work at the company. Shut up, Cedric. Just tell me what you're talking about. Before ultimately giving the order to cut the contract, I had set up meetings and received ample approval. I mean, this is beyond obvious to anyone who knows anything about how a company works. Having the whole of the Hyperion organization cut ties with Luminary Holdings is a pretty big scale operation on its own. Wait, what are you getting at? Cut to the chase. The company's president had given me his explicit approval on the cancellation of the contract between Luminary Holdings and Hyperion. The company's president? Now you're just making no sense. You're the one who just told me to cut to the chase. I'm just giving you what you wanted. But to put it simply, this situation isn't something that I had decided on my own. Or more simply, I wasn't the only one who had pushed for the cancellation of the contract between Hyperion and Luminary Holdings. In the end, it was the company president of Hyperion who had given me permission to order the cancellation of the contract. What? The president gave you the permission to cancel the contract? But why? Why would he do something like that? Luminary Holdings and Hyperion have had a contract going back at least 10 years. Why would he give permission to cut ties just like that? Well, it might have something to do with how he feels about being made into a fool for trying to raise and adopt a child as his own. It really does sound like him not being able to hold back his anger, lashing out at the people who had decided to talk ill of him and his family. Huh? You can't possibly mean... No, are you telling me that the adoptive father that you were talking about before, the one that you wanted to meet and have a private chat with was... He was the president of the Hyperion Company? That your stepfather is the president? In not so many words, yes, my father is the president of the company. He's been particularly kind to me ever since I joined the company. He started to say that he wanted to have a successor to the company, which is when the whole conversation of being an adopted son had come into play. No, you can't be serious. You mean to say that I had abruptly canceled the wedding to the world-famous Hyperion Company's son? That I'd been insulting the family of one of the world's biggest company presidents? Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> also, I guess I should mention that the adoptive process is already finished. I've already entered the Hyperion family. It's too bad that you threw it all away for the sake of your own pride. Uh, hey, Cedric, can I talk for a second? Huh? What do you want? Do you possibly think that we could do it over again? We can try again one more time? I know that you've been refusing to even think about it for a while, but could you think it over again? I'll give you time to really think it over. I'll let you take the lead on it. In turn, I'll think about what I can do to change. To make everything go the way it was. How it should have been. <laughs> really? How is it that you think you're going to change then? What are you going to do? The whole way of thinking about how orphanages aren't good things, about how they're beggars and all those cruel things that I said earlier. I will think it over again. I'll change my way of thinking. I'll stop thinking about them in such a cruel way. I'll even start donating to orphanages and promoting them to other people in order for them to get better facilities. Please, Cedric. Is anything that I'm saying getting through to you? I'm really sorry for what I'd said, and I just want to make amends. I'm being sincere here. Please just give me another chance. Well, it's better than the vile and incorrigible things that you've said earlier, but only because what you said before was the worst thing possible. But seriously, Cynthia, sincerely, please don't make me laugh. What you're saying now is simply just a roundabout way of saying, I want to marry the heir of the Hyperion Company. Nothing more. Nothing about what you're even saying is remotely sincere. It's all just a lie to try and further your own agenda. It's nothing like that. It's also for my parents' company. There are many people that are employed by Luminary. I'm trying to save them and their livelihoods. What you're doing is going to destroy the lives of so many people. Is that what you want? Are you really that heartless? As I see, well, this is a pretty rare occasion for you, isn't it, Cynthia? You're not usually this honest with what you want to do. You even seem to have a somewhat logical reason for what you're doing. Obviously, I'm the daughter of the president of Luminary. As such, caring for the livelihood of my company's employees is something that I will do without question. All right, I understand. Then how about we do this? So you're going to give me another chance? Huh? Please, just stop. I'm already trying to hold back my laughter from earlier. 
God, no, I'm not giving you another chance. Seriously, you just don't give up now, do you? Anyway, so when Luminary goes bankrupt and all of the company goes into restructuring, I'll make it so that all of the company's employees that were to be out of a job can come and work at Hyperion. What? No, it can't go like that. Uh, why not? I don't see a problem here. Because, I mean, even if all of the employees are saved, me and my parents were still going to be out in the streets from bankruptcy. You don't have to hire some mindless, good-for-nothing employees. Please, just make it so that my parents can join Hyperion. No, more than that. Cedric, don't nullify the contract with my company. <laughs> Again, you're revealing what you truly feel. It was never about your employees in the first place. It was all a facade in order to save yourself. Again, completely selfish. Not only that, you're calling your employees mindless and good for nothing. I'll be completely honest with you, Cynthia. You are truly blowing me away with how oblivious you can be. The deal is not going to be reestablished. That is something that I will simply not even put on the table. No, Cedric, please, I'm begging you. If it continues like this, the company will really go into bankruptcy. Everything will start crumbling down. My parents are furious with me and I don't know what to do. Please, Cedric, help me. I'm seriously begging you. Wait, is that what I think it is? Isn't that the begging that you so much despised? Look at what you've reduced yourself down to. I guess it would be nice if there were someone out there who would have cared enough to want to save you. Well, anyway, I'm really busy, so I'll just leave it at that. Goodbye, Cynthia, and have a nice day. Cedric, wait, don't do this to me. Wait, Cedric, don't abandon me like this. After my conversation with Cynthia, Luminary Holdings spiraled into bankruptcy, leading all former employees to find a new home at Hyperion Company, where they were warmly embraced. In stark contrast, the Luminary Holdings family sank into overwhelming debt, even resorting to using their house as collateral. They now wake up to cardboard walls in a local park, succumbing to the financial strain. Despite some time passing since the bankruptcy, none of them have secured stable employment. Their days are spent scavenging through trash and begging on the streets, seeking refuge and shelters for meals. It's a daily existence of poverty and destitution, a reality Cynthia callously disparaged in our final moments together. I commend the kind-hearted individuals extending a helping hand to this struggling family. Above all, I hope Cynthia finally comprehends the hardships faced by the very people she once so readily demonized.